Hi everyone, this is Joe Rubello, known to many of you on the internet and the world as Kenpo Joe. And in today's episode of Elaborating on Kenpo, uh, we're going to focus on kicking set one from the Ed Parker American Kenpo Karate System. And um, the reason we're actually I'm going over this particular set was because I watched someone on YouTube going over kicking set one and the person had beautiful high kicks and nice nice kicking form not necessarily kempo kicking form but kicking form and a couple of people commended him and complimented him on on his form doing the kicks and whatnot but as i watched it i was really i was kind of is this kicking set one uh, no and the reason why was because of certain foot maneuvers and the alignment of certain kicks so i really said you know i'm not just going to be upset I, i've got it's time to do another video so we want to talk a little bit about kicking set one, where it came from, how it's done, and elaborate upon kicking set one. So let's, shall we? Sure. So first of all, kicking set one was not created by Ed Parker. Kicking set one was created as a black belt thesis by Mr. Tom Kelly. Now, Mr. Tom Kelly was a tournament fighter and was a, a, a big guy. He was a big strapping individual and um, in the tournament world at that time, uh, a lot of people were under the misguided impression that Kempo people couldn't kick high. That, that they could only kick low, but again, as we know, the nomenclature of Kempo as a, as a system denotes utilizing lower line kicks, normally waist level and below, and our upper body, our hands, etc., striking our opponent's upper body. So. As a tournament competitor, he had to kick above the waist if he was going to score points. Also, he wanted to, to, when he created the set, he created the set in such a way that if we're in a regulation tournament ring, which normally is like 18 to 20 feet, and I'm halfway along that ring, and the judge says begin, I want to be able to chase my opponent out of the ring with those four kicks, or in the process of those four kicks, get one or more kicks in on my opponent. So that was the basic foundation format on why he decided to design the set. Also, the set is uh, in the geometric shape of a square. Again, four major equal angles. And again, back in the 60s, you know, if you weren't groovy, man, you were just square. So the kicks themselves and how they're applied, um, Again, first of all, each particular line has four kicks. Now, some people are aware of the theme of each line, some are not. We're going to talk about that as well. So the first thing we want to discuss is, uh, is how each line in the set is performed and the original and the updated. Let's check that out, shall we? So what do we know about kicking set one? Well, first of all, we know it's a set. So again, I'm going to back up a little bit here. And my left foot's going to meet my right. I'm going to go to a tension stance. I'm going to utilize a bow because all sets begin and end with a bow, not a salutation. I'm going to step out with my left foot to a meditating horse. I'm going to go over the set in my mind. And when I'm ready, I'm going to open my eyes. I'm going to step back with my right foot. And then I'm going to start the set. Now, we want to talk about the actual physical kicks themselves. We want to talk about First of all, the method of execution and what constitutes a kendo kick as opposed to a karate kick. So first of all, the method of execution all throughout this set is snapping. There are no thrusting kicks in this set. All the kicks are performed in a snapping fashion. And what does snapping mean? Snapping means that whenever you throw an action that it retracts back faster than it came out. So if I'm going to throw a snapping kick, I bring my knee up, execute the kick, and I want to bring my foot back faster than it came out. So from here, I'm up, out, in, and down. That's the key. So all the various kicks done in kicking set one are utilized with a snapping method of execution. The other aspect we want to talk about is what is the difference between a karate kick and a kenpo kick. Now, in the uh, documentary, The New Gladiators, Lima Lama expert Sal Esquivel is talking to his son Danny, another fighter. He says, I don't want to see those karate kicks. I want you guys to do kempo kicks. What does that mean? 
Simply stated, it means in other karate systems that I've studied and other martial arts systems that do a predominant amount of kicking, such as Taekwondo, Northern Style Praying Mantis, etc. When we snap a kick in those systems, many times we will retract our foot back to go forward and then back and in. Up, out, in, down. Now you notice how far back I brought my foot? So I chambered my foot back, all the way back, to get additional distance and travel in my kick. But in Kempo, we don't do that. In Kempo, if I'm in my neutral bow, my basic fighting stance, and I'm going to throw a front kick, I pick up my knee, and my foot stays hanging on that particular position. I don't retract my foot back to bring it forward. It's kind of like John Wayne in the old movies, oh, I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to hit you. <laughs> like hell I'm not. And he'd wind all the way back for that big cinematic punch. So that even the guy in the back row of the movie theater can see John Wayne knock this guy out. So the key ingredient in kicking set is that we're not retracting our foot back to kick forward. Another example of that, I was recently watching on another Kempo board that they had pointed out a gentleman throwing a back kick and he was a tournament fighter and doing it, you know, the, the classic way taught in his particular system and also in certain other Kempo systems as well, in which he had his hands on the wall and he brought his knee all the way up forward and then fired his kick. So again, when he brought his knee forward, his leg flexed out horizontally. I'm going to move over a little bit so you can see the alignment of the foot better. So again, he had both his hands on the wall, brought his knee straight up, curling his toes back toward his face to isolate the heel of his foot. And then when he kicked higher, what happened was the foot, and I'm trying to do this slowly with control, bear with me, I, I'm, a, I'm a little older, but anyway, the key ingredient here, brought the knee up, flexed out, and back and down. And what that happened is the flexation of the foot flared out to a horizontal plane. That's what we're trying to talk about here. And there are certain Kempo, well, I don't throw a back kick that way. Right, because if you do Ed Parker's Kempo, the Tracy system, or any variation thereof, you weren't taught to do a back kick that way. The way you were taught to do a back kick, and I always jokingly say, you kick yourself in the butt, so you bring your heel back and you make sure that your foot stays in a vertical alignment. And, uh, and I always jokingly say, I'm always reminded of the old Jack Benny series, which only dates me on how old I am, where they had his, uh, his uh, African-American male uh, manservant, Rochester, and it was like, every time Rochester got scared, it was like, feats do your duty. And he'd bring his foot up like this, like he's gonna run away. That alignment and that position is the position we use to execute a back kick. And in so doing, we also want to ensure that our foot stays vertical, straight up and down. So again, as to paraphrase a, a soccer announcer, you kick between the uprights, or in a football game, get that field goal between the uprights. Goal! And you drive that kick with the heel of your foot in a vertical alignment. Again, that's a Kempo kick. So we talked a lot about point of origin and economy of motion in relationship to our kicks. So, if we understand those elements and those aspects and that premise of the set, let's go into it. So, again, there are four basic lines and four basic kicks. Actually, there'll be five lines where four will change, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, each particular line also has a theme. And a lot of people aren't aware of the themes in this simple sentence that applies to each one of the kicks. So, four the lines, I should say, of the kicks, rather. And line one teaches all four major foot maneuvers, which are step through, crossover, shuffle, and spin. That's what we do in the set, those four major foot maneuvers, in some way, shape, or form, at some point in the form. Sorry, set, not form. So, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a step back, check our distancing, Left foot meets the right, kicking set one. I bow, I step up with my left foot, meditating horse. I open my eyes, I step back in a right neutral bow, I execute a front right snapping ball kick. I execute a left front crossover, 
right side, not right knife edge kick or foot sword. I execute a drag up right front roundhouse. And I execute a left spinning back kick. Cover step, pivot turn, guard up, back kick, land. Left neutral bow. So, step through is step through, right? Again, we're, we're, here in a, we're here in a neutral bow. Once we go past the point of no return and step through without kick and land, remember, a kick is nothing more than an exaggerated step. So, that's easy enough. Okay. Then we execute a left front crossover. We don't do a rear crossover because traditionally in American Kempo, a front crossover is designed to move forward in a straight line and a rear crossover forward moves on a diagonal. Now, there are other styles of Kempo where we would do a rear crossover and stay on a straight line because we'll end up in a side horse. Not in this set, not in this system of Kempo. So, after I do my first kick and I land in my right neutral bow, I'm going to execute a left front crossover. Now notice each foot is moving on its own path and I execute my side kick. Now again, some people will say, okay, do I chamber this way or do I point it toward my opponent? I want to chamber here and then strike with my foot sword or knife edge kick. I want to protect my groin against him possibly trying to kick me with a roundhouse kick. Then I want to do a drag step. Now again, a drag step. I drag my back foot up, all the way up to the point of my other foot, not past it. Once I do, that comes crossover. And we want to make sure that each foot is on its own path. And the common mistake I see a lot of people do is when they do a drag step, they'll drag one foot behind the other. No. It's like a train on railroad tracks. Each wheel has to stay on that track unless it's turning to another angle and there's another set of tracks to make it turn to an angle. But, simply stated, this rear foot still has to come up. Why? So later on it can come up to a crossover if so desired. Again, Kempo Law, don't get in your own way. So anyway, so here I am. I do my left front crossover up with the ball of my foot. I bring my knee up, snap my leg out, and land. Now, with my drag step, I drag my foot up, and I execute a front roundhouse. Now, remember, a front roundhouse is nothing more than a front kick turned on its side. So I can bring my knee up, turn it over, kick, and land. The knee comes up horizontal, it turns it's vertical, it turns horizontal and strikes. Now if we're in a neutral bow, we can always just kick from point of origin and bring our leg up to that position due to the natural alignment of our front foot. Again, once I pick my foot up off the ground, I can change the alignment any way I wish. So I drag up, I can bring my knee up in front of me, and then torque into the roundhouse kick and down. Again, all these kicks are being done with the exception of the heel kick with the ball of your foot. Mr. Parker, I was once discussing kicks with Mr. Parker, and I said, Mr. Parker, do you prefer the ball of the foot being utilized or the instep? And he said to me, Joseph, would you rather slap someone or punch them? So by utilizing the ball of our foot, we're punching someone with our foot. So after we've done our first three kicks, our, fir our fourth kick, of course, is the spinning back kick, in which I execute a cover step, turn, Draw to a reverse cat, as some people call it. Execute my back kick in a vertical alignment, bring the heel to my buttocks, and push the leg out and back. And then I allow the weight of my leg and pivoting on my supporting foot, allowing the rotational torque to drop me into my left neutral bow. And there you have it, line one. So again, the motto is line one teaches all four major foot maneuvers. Let's go on. Line two, the model for line two, or the theme of line two is line two is all right leg kicks. Now, so, again, I was in a left neutral bow. And when I do my cover step, and I'm doing a long cover step. Now again, long cover steps or side steps are normally done to the open side. 
Here, we're stepping to the closed side to create the distance away from our opponent that we're facing at this particular angle. Again, we start at 12, next person's at 3. So I step back to 9 in a left neutral bow. Remember, left neutral bow. So here I am, and again, it's very important because, hey, don't we end line 1 in left neutral bow? We're going to talk about that in a minute. At the end of the form, we'll talk about it. So here, now, line 1 started with a front kick, line 2 starts with a side kick. So from here, I execute a right step through side snap kick or foot sword or knife edge kick. I bring my leg up, pow, I land. Then, right from there, all my other three kicks are all going to be shuffle kicks or drag kicks with my right foot. Again, line three teaches you all right leg kicks. I'm going to shuffle back a little bit here. So right from here, I'm going to drag up, front snap kick, drag up, front roundhouse kick, drag up, and now we're going to do, as they say in baseball, a change up. I'm going to do a drag up, right back kick, pivot land. A little sloppy, I understand. I'll do it again. So again, I want to go from the left side to the right side. So, all, so I execute a step through foot maneuver with my kick. Again, remember kicks are nothing more than exaggerated steps. So I execute a right step through foot snap. Sorry, I fall. Like I said, it's late. A right step through side snap. I'll leave all the mistakes in. No, I'm human. Right step through side snap kick. Land. Drag up, right front snap ball kick. Drag up, right front roundhouse. Drag up, turn your back. It looks like a spinning kick, back kick. It feels like a spinning back kick. It smells and tastes like a spinning back kick, but it's not. It's a drag up, back kick. So I drag up, turn my back, and keep my hands to the right side so I can fire the right back kick, pivot, land, and drop. That's the key. So, again, the importance of the drag step foot maneuver. One of the reasons I put this video together, watching this gentleman do it, he kept doing crossovers. And I'm like going, no, there's not that many crossovers in, in, this, in this set. Why are you doing crossovers instead of drag, drag steps? Now again, I want to, 2012, I was at an event that Chris Stewart put on for Campo Ohana, and he had two special guests. He had Steve Labounty and he had Pat Salantri. And I was going over kicking set, and I asked Mr. Salantri, to come up and if he would be kind enough to perform kicking set. A couple people really got bent with me about it. They were like, oh, can you ask a man that high rank? Dude, I'm going, guys, he had half his foot blown off by an explosive device in Vietnam. He doesn't have a full foot. So because of that, he's had to tailor the set to his body. He's had to tailor the set. And personally, I was fascinated to find out how he had tailored the set. And it, it really was fascinating. And if you get a chance to work with Mr. Salantri, watch how he's tailored the kicking set to his ability. It's a, very insightful. So that being said, um, you know, there aren't that many crossovers in this, in this set. So when I was watching this other gentleman do all these crossovers, I'm going, ah, no. Now, I don't know if there was something wrong with his leg. He had great form on his kicks. He had good technique. So I kind of doubt that was, I doubt that was the case. Uh, maybe he was just taught that way, hence why I'm doing this video. So, if we understand that, we understand the basics of that, we want to make sure, as we said before, if you're going to do a drag step, make sure each foot moves on its own line. Again, from a side view, Drag, step, and again, keep your head height level. Drag, step, and again, like we said before, a kick is nothing more than an exaggerated step. Let's go on, shall we? Line three. Now, uh, again, there's a popular thing people are talking about, uh, category completion, didn't exist until Ed Parker, after Ed Parker died, Huck Planus created that term, etc. It's still accurate, but what Ed Parker did say was for every move, theory, concept, principle, or definition, there is an opposite and a reverse. I make all my students in all my martial arts learn that phrase. It is a critical phrase to understand the martial arts and to gain a level of mastery in those arts. So, that being said, line three is the opposite and reverse of line two. 
It's the opposite leg, and it's the reverse order. Now remember, in line two, we used our right leg, and we did side kick, front kick, roundhouse, back kick. In line three, we're going to use our left leg, and we're going to do back kick, roundhouse, front kick, side kick. Mm-hmm. So, if I finish this set with my right foot forward, line two, which I had to because all the right leg kicks, if I'm going to do a left back kick, I have to do a left spinning back kick. So, from this position, I execute a left spinning back kick. I execute a cover step, I turn, I draw, I'm done with railroad tracks, don't get in your own way. I execute my back kick, I bend my knee and pivot to drop myself with a left lead. Then I use a drag up, left front roundhouse, drag up, left front snap kick, drag up, left side snap kick, land. And that's it. So again, we're snapping our kicks, we're reversing the, which leg we're kicking with, and in this case we're going to go from right to left instead of moving forward with a step through, we're moving forward on the opposite angle. So, the opposite of linear is circular. The opposite of right is left. See where we're going here? The opposite of kicking to the front is kicking to the rear. For every move, theory, concept, principle, and definition, there's an opposite and a reverse. So, line four is teaching us how to execute a left spinning back kick, which puts us in a left lead, and then our next three kicks are shuffle kicks. Roundhouse, front snap, side snap, land. There we are. Hey, remember, we're in that left lead at the end. It's going to be important later on. So now, from here, we go into the famous line four. And many generations, I see people doing the roundhouse kick initially, and they say, oh, that was the way it always was. And I go, no, it wasn't. Originally, line four was taught as follows. From our left neutral bow, we execute a right step through front snapping ball kick. We execute a step through left roundhouse kick into a right spinning back kick into a left side kick and land. That's how it was originally taught. It's very important. Why? Let's show you. So remember the concept. Original is a front kick. So right step through front snap kick. Left step through roundhouse. Right spinning back kick. Left step through side kick. Very important. In the mid to later 1980s, Dennis Konatzer had a gentleman who was one of his black belts who said a very interesting question when learning kicking set. He was like, hey, line one starts with a front kick. Line two starts with a side kick. Line three starts with a back kick. Shouldn't line one start with a roundhouse kick? And apparently for his black belt thesis, or um, I'm not sure the exact details regarding it, and Dennis Knatzer has told me the individual's name. I know he's still involved with martial arts. I believe he's with Paul Mills right now. I'm not exactly sure. If you know the name of this individual, please place it in the comments uh, after this video. I'm trying to remember the gentleman's name. I'm blanking out. Even the guy with the photographic memory, every once in a while the film gets overexposed. So if you can help me out, that'd be great. But anyway, so... Dennis calls Mr. Parker and says, hey, and he tells him this idea, and he goes, hmm, you know what? Let's change it. Okay. So I started learning Kempo in 1983. So in 1986 and 87, they changed this. And I'm like, okay, just as I learned it one way, I learned it the other way. But here's the thing. By doing that, they took something out. They did. They took something out. Now remember the line. Right front ball kick, left roundhouse, right spinning back kick, left step through side. Remember that. 
Hmm. From ball left, right spinning back kick. Let me check line one. I got a right front snap kick, crossover right side snap kick, drag up right front roundhouse. Hmm. Left spinning back kick. Okay, it's not, so that's left. Maybe line two. Right side kick, right front kick, right front roundhouse, right back kick. Oh, it's not spinning. Hmm. How about line three? No, line three is all left leg kick. So it's a left spinning back kick, left roundhouse, left front snap kick, left side snap kick. Line four was changed. So line four became a right step through roundhouse, left spinning back kick, right step through front kick, left side kick. Hey, didn't we lose something? Yeah, we did. Because originally, it was a front kick, left, right, spinning back kick. Holy guacamole, Batman! There's no symmetrical action with the spinning back kicks. <gasps> right? So in the process of updating the set, they deleted the symmetrical action and ambidextrous behavior with the spinning back kicks. Something to think about, right? Front kicks, we do a right one, we do a left one. Check. Side kicks, we do a right one, we do a left one. Check. Roundhouse kicks, we do a right one, we do a left one. Check. Spinning back kicks, we do a left one, but we don't do a right one anymore. Incorrect. But it was changed in the late 80s and it became gospel. And Ed Parker always admired Jesus Christ and the, the Bible and, the, and parables. So, uh, you know, it became gospel. But uh, guess what? It's missing something. It's missing a right spinning back kick. Now, Dennis Knatzer, my good friend, my good close personal friend, sits there and says, well, if you're doing it on both sides, Joe, and I go, really, how many, how many American Kepler practitioners do you know actually do all their sets on both sides? They're supposed to, but do they actually do so? Most times not. Ed Parker, famous phrase, every time I think my black belts are getting a little bit cocky, I make them do all the material on the opposite side. It really humbles them. Those are exact words from Ed Parker. So, uh, so that's what happened. In the course of changing it to quote unquote fit that mode, something got lost. Now, um, line four, there's a model with that one. It's all left leg kicks. Oh, sorry, that's three. Huh? <laughs> line four, it's late. Line four is all step through kicks. They're all step through kicks. So line one teaches all four major methods of execution. Line two is all right leg kicks. Line three is the opposite and reverse of line four. And line four is all step through kicks. Hey, here's an extra treat for you. Did you know that you can do the entirety of kicking set one in a straight line? It's specifically designed to do that too. So that means that you can do all 16 kicks in a straight line. Let's see if I have enough room here. So from my right neutral bow, right step through front ball kick, left front crossover, right side snap kick, drag up right front roundhouse, and left spinning back kick, land. Left neutral bow, remember? Line two, right step through front ball kick, nope, oh, I'm sorry, my fault, late, my apologies, but I really want to get this across to you guys. Right step through side snap kick, Drag up right front snap kick, drag up right front roundhouse, drag up right back kick, land. Right neutral ball, remember? Left spinning back kick. I know it turned to the side, sorry about that. Drag up left front roundhouse, drag up left front snap kick, drag up left side snap kick. Left neutral ball, remember? Now, either version of four you can perform. Excuse me, my shoe's falling off a little bit here. Give me a moment. You should say, you should be barefoot. Okay. 
So here we are, left neutral ball. Whether it's a right step through front ball kick or a right step through roundhouse, it's still going to work. So we'll do the update. Right step through roundhouse, left spinning back kick, right step through front kick, right step through side kick, land. You can do the entire set in a straight line. And that's the beauty of it. And you can take line one and two and go do them back, and back to back and chase somebody out with uh, eight kicks. Or you can do all three lines and make it 12 and do all four lines and do all 16. But the key ingredient is you can chase a person with these kicks. Now, height, we normally keep it low if you have a higher degree of flexibility and you can do higher line kicks. Great, cool, fantastic, hallelujah. Great, alter the height of the kicks. Adjust the kicks to different levels of range of motion and flexibility. Maybe you want to do thrust kicks instead. Fine, you can mess with the method of execution. Um, again, you can combine them. You can do high to low, low to high. You can have a lot of fun you can have with these kicks. Uh, you can work it, of course, with an air shield. Again, having the person hold or with pads and have some fun with this. But again, this is going over, and I hope I've helped you go over kicking set one. Again, I'm not the best, I'm not the worst, but I just watch certain things that I know from my time working with Mr. Parker and many of the first generation black belts that I know is the way that the set was taught and I want to pass that knowledge along to you. Now obviously, once I finish that left side kick, I step up with my right foot to horse, left foot meets the right and close, and I bow and I complete the set. Now if I'm doing this from the square, again, um, no, you know what? You look it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave something, just something. <coughs> no COVID. Um, that you can play with. <coughs> Gosh, I got a tickle in my throat. But anyway, I'm talking to you guys, but that's all right. So again, I hope I've been of some assistance. I hope I was of some service. I hope this causes, as it did with my last video, people to talk, people to write back and forth and go, hey, do you have it that way? Or no, I don't have, do you have, did you know that? Or I didn't know that. Boy, that was a really interesting. Boy, I can't, boy, I hate that Joe Rebello guy. Gosh, that Tempo Joe, ooh. And I have my share of haters out there. Who doesn't? But the key ingredient is I, I, I hope that I was of some assistance to you in regards to learning Kicking Set 1. Thank you for your time, and uh, this is Kenpo Joe, known to me on the internet and the martial arts world as Kenpo Joe. Until next time, keep kicking.